Welcome. Today I will show you how to install Blitzy port for Oracle EBS. The Blitzy port installation is described in the installation guide on our webpage nGenetics.com. So if you go here to the Blitzy port and then the installation guide, you find all the detailed installation steps listed here. So first the prerequisites, then the installation, and then post installation setup. And at the end, there's also a section for troubleshooting in case you encounter any warnings in the installation log, for example. And in the introduction section, we find a high level overview of the steps. So it would first be downloading the application software and then creating custom applications through the AD splice process from Oracle and running the installation script. And then depending on your current system configuration, you may or may not require these configuration steps, for example, for the integrated SOAR gateway. If you use it already, then you would not need to do this. And uh, the custom PL is similar. So if you have modifications to your custom PLL already, then you would see a warning in the Blitz report installation log, and then you would need to apply some changes there manually as well. And at the end, there is uh, application setup which is mainly accessing, setting the access profile option for Blitz Report to control which users have access to which functionality in Blitz Report, and then also to add the Blitz Report into the navigation menus and some additional application setup steps. So let's first start with the download of the software. So we go to the download page and we fill out the downloads form. I have everything auto completed. Company name, okay. So once you have submitted this form, you will receive an email with the download link. So when you click on the email link here, it will automatically download the software. I've done that before already and have placed the, the uh, downloaded file on the application server into a new folder in genetics. So the the script needs to be run as the application owner, Apple manager on our environment. And so I created a subfolder in your home directory called Ingenetics and placed the, the file there. So let's first go to the installation guide again. So this first step would be we have downloaded. The first step would be to create a custom application through the AD Splice. And the process is described here we use the Eddie Splice Oracle standard uh, process, and that requires creating control files, which, for example, define which application is created and which application IDs are used and so on. And we have prepared these control files already. So those are text files in the, uh, which need to be placed in the Apple top admin directory. So the first step would be unzipping our Blitz report files. So let me go here to, so here, this is the folder where we have the downloaded file. So let me unzip it. And then it creates a folder and we can navigate to that folder. And in here, now let me do it on the WinSCP then it's easier. On here in the created folder, we have a subfolder called AD Splice. And in the subfolder we have then these control files. And these control files, they contain then the application ID and, and more details about what application needs to be created. So we would then follow the instructions here to copy the control files to the uh, Apple top admin directory, change to that directory and run AD Splice. On this environment here, I'm not doing that now because we have the AD Splice, we have the XCN application created already earlier. So I just explained the process. So once you have copied and run this, the AD Splice, it will ask a couple of questions. You can confirm all of them with enter. In between, it will ask for the apps password and the system password. And at the end, it will ask if you would like to um, create, recreate the environment files. And then when you confirm with enter, which means yes, then autoconfig will automatically run. And autoconfig will then generate all the environment files. And in order to source the new environment, you would idea would easily easiest would be to just log out and log in again. And then you can test if the new custom application is part of your environment uh, context. And at the end, we would start stop and restart the application tier services that is required for the new application 
to be recognized by the concurrent manager and by the application server. And this restart is also the reason why some of our customers do not create a separate customer application. Because if you look here in the introduction, the custom application step is recommended, but it is an optional step. So if, for example, you cannot easily have a downtime for Blitz report because we have some customers which need to have their server running 24 seven and it's very difficult to plan a downtime, then it is also possible to install the Blitz report into an existing custom application already. And then you would not need to have an application server downtime. Because after auto config is run, you would need to restart these application services. So that is the AD splice process. And after the custom application is created, we would, uh, let's go back to the introduction, we would then run the installation. So the installation is just running the script install.sh, which is also in this folder. You see here's the, uh, the script. Let's just run it. And it will ask for the apps password. It may also ask for the system passwords and also for the WebLogic server passwords, depending on your application server version and your integrated store gateway configuration. So it's the installation script itself. It creates um, database objects for Blitz report. It loads application setup, for example, profile options, concurrent management, uh, concurrent program definitions, and also uh, loads the custom Blitz report functions and so on. And then it loads the user interface components. For example, it compiles the form and also com loads the old framework pages because Blitz report has a form version and also an old framework HTML user interface version. And then at the end, it loads the uh, web service components, which are required for the upload functionality and for the financial statement generation functionality. And it also loads then all our CD reports. So Blitz report comes with around more than 500 reports out of the box, and those are loaded as well. Okay, so while this is running, let me go back to the installation guide and explain a little bit more about the integrated SOAR gateway configuration, because for many customers, they, this is not configured yet. And so we have behind this link, there's a block that explains what needs to be done. The installation script will also automatically detect what needs to be done on your system. So it, for example, it detects your, the patch set level. And if the patch set level is not high enough it, the, in the installation script of Blitzy port, it, it shows a warning explaining which patch would need to be applied. So then you would follow this, this block here and apply the patch that is listed. And after the patch is deployed, there is a step to run the where is it the configuration script itself so oracle has a configuration script for the integrated SOAR gateway that's a Perl script and that also requires a downtime for uh, by the way so you would need to plan a downtime for this because it requires an application services restart as well so you would apply the patch run this Perl script and typically then create a global user the glo global user only needs to be created without any responsibility so it's a user that is required for some reason. It's also explained in this Oracle node. It doesn't, it's never used to log in to the application. It just needs to be there. So it doesn't need any responsibilities. It just needs to be active and without password expiration. That's it. And after that is created, we would need to run the workflow directory services role validation for that global user. So that is the integrated SOAR gateway configuration. And the other thing, let's go back to the installation guide. The next step, which is often required for customers, is the an update to the custom PLL. Because if you never use the custom PLL for any functionality, then our installation script will automatically add the required changes. But many customers, they use the custom PLL already for other purposes. And then there is a manual update required through the forms builder. And DBAs typically don't have access to these forms developer and forms builder tool. And for that reason, we we often update the custom PLs for our customers. So if you don't easily have access to a developer doing this for you, we can we are quite happy doing that because it's it's very simple. So if you have the forms builder installed, you would open a custom PL and then you would add the XXLN library. Uh, you would attach it, 
And once it is attached, there is one single line, which is this one here, code line, that needs to be added to the events routine, to the events procedure in the custom package body. And at the end, the custom PL needs to be compiled. So the compilation command is here in step five. And so if you need help, you can send us the custom PL uh, by either by email, or you can also go to our support page and then fill out the support form, or you could also use the chat icon here. That's typically quickest. Okay, so let's see how far the installation has come. So it's still running. It is now doing uh, language installation steps. That's almost at the end. So depending on which languages you have installed, it may also run these language installation, language specific uh, steps. So on this system, we have many languages installed. You see, for example, I think this is traditional Chinese and and yeah, if you have more languages, it runs slightly longer, but it should be almost completed because this is one of the last steps. So let's see. Okay, so now at the end, it writes a summary of the installation, which is here. Oh, wait. So here, and we don't see any warnings or any errors, which looks good. We only see the message that we should clear the middle tier cache using the functional administrator responsibility. Okay, so that means we can go back to the installation guide. And where was it? And go to the next step, to the application server. So now we would, uh, ah, first we need to clear the cache, clear the middle key cache through the functional administrator. So let's log into the application, a system administrator, and go to the functional administrator and clear the cache. Core services, caching framework, global configuration, clear all cache. Yes. That's it. Then let's go back to the home. And the next step would be, now we can start with the application setup. The next step would be setting the Blitzy port access profile option to, sh to define which users should have access to the development screen, for example. Okay, let's log in as the system administrator and go straight away to the system profile options. You would search for the blitz report access. You can just type blitz percent and sys admin. We have several blitz report profile options, and the one we would be looking for is the blitz report access. By default, it is set to the value user on site, which means every user has the default only is the lowest access level. That means they can use blitz report, but they cannot access the setup screen. In order, for example, to modify SQLs, you would need to have either developer or system access. System is the highest access, so system even give access, gives access to modify the upload functionality. Now I'm logged in as this admin, so I'm giving myself the highest access system. That's it. What else? So that was the first step. Next one would be to add the Blitz report function through to all the application menus and also the program to the request groups. And that is done through the update menu entries concurrent program. So that's also in the system administrator. So we would go to view requests, submit a new request, and the name is blitz report update menu entries. And in most cases, in most cases, it can be run just with the default parameters like this. But on our environment, because the test system, I would like to have it also in the Navigator top 10 list on the right hand side, because then it's more convenient to use, because then we can use the uh, one number one key on a keyboard to access the Blitz report. So that is running. Typically, it doesn't take that long, maybe a few seconds up to a minute, I would think. 
And while this is running, we can look at the next step. So that would be the concurrent manager work shift. That's step number three. By default, the concurrent manager, uh, the, it runs, the, it has a sleep time of 30 seconds. And that is very slow. And in order to have better performance for the users, we would go to concurrent manager define, and then we query the standard manager. So by default, the blitz reports are run under the standard manager. And here we will change the sleep time to five seconds. That is beneficial, not for blitz, not just for blitz report, by the way, everything else on the pro on the server would also run quicker. So that is in general, it's a recommended setting also, not just for blitz report. And if you have a very large system, you might want to create a separate manager for blitz report, but that's, I would say only if you have thousands of users, then I would think might become relevant. So we have done that step. And the last one is step number four to schedule the next one to schedule the Blitz report monitor concurrent program. The Blitz report monitor concurrent program is required to remove inactive users from the Blitz report licenses. So Blitz report, if you have the license version, you have a limited number of users. And if a user is end-dated before the license can be reused by someone else, this process needs to be run. So we can schedule it as well. So we go again to view request, then submit a new request. Okay, and the process name is Blitz report monitor. We just run it with the default and we schedule it every day. Okay, that's it. Let's go back to the installation guide. So the last step is the license key. So if you have the license version, you can go to the license key window and then update your license key here. The first installation Blitz report automatically installs a test license key, a trial license key, which is valid for three months and limited to 10 users. So we should now see the Blitz report. By the way, uh, you might have recognized there is a new Excel icon up here already. And, but it's grayed out because it's when we opened the, this responsibility, we did not have the Blitz report menu entry update concurrent program run yet. And uh, if you see this Excel icon already, that means the custom PLL change was successful. So we can change now responsibility. Let's say we go to one of the, let's say payables payables manager, and then we can open a Blitz report. And we have, here we have a list of reports. Let's first see if it's working. Let's run something very simple. Let's say FND applications It's a very small report. And here you see the status pending now it's running. And once the output is completed, it opens it up automatically and it looks good. So it generated the Excel it means Blitz report is working. And now let's uh, show the license key. So because I've set myself up, let me go back to the run window. I set myself up through the profile option as a developer. That's why we have the setup button here. So users will typically not be able to access it, but of course we have set the setup, the profile option, we can access the setup screen. And here under tools, license key, we see the license key information. And you see there's a trial license installed for 10 users valid until the end of July. So that's all good. And now the last part, which we should test is if the integrated SOAR gateway is working. And that is, uh, that we can test through one of our uploads. So here we have on the right hand side, we have the categories, we can select the upload category and use, for example, let's test the AP invoice uploads. And we need, let's see if we have, if we are in the right responsibility. 
Vision Operations, Batch Name. Let's use best batch name test and running it. Here you see the status again, pending, running. And it produces the output file. And this is now because it's upload, it is a macro enabled file, so it's XLSM. You might need to have your macro settings enabled uh, in order to use this functionality. So now we have the invoice type, for example, it has a list of value. That's why we see this arrow. And to test if it's working, we could either double click or we can press the enter key. And we should see now if everything is installed correctly, we should see now the list of value. Yes, we see here these invoice types, or for example, we can enter a supplier. And that means if you see this list of values, it means the integrated SOAR gateway is working. And that basically means that Blitz report is installed successfully and it is ready to use. And in case you encounter any problems, you would see typically see a warning in the installation log here. And in such case, please send us the whole log file and there's a zip file created. Let me show that. Oh, like that. So it has a, there's a zip file created in that folder, in the installation folder. And that is that would contain all the here, this one. This zip file contains all the logs that we would require to analyze the problem. And you can uh, send us the file ideally through the support chat. So you can just go here to our web page. You can either enter a ticket here or you can also use the chat icon here. And then we can analyze the problem. Okay, so that was the Blitz Report installation. Thanks for watching.